All right, let's start. Um, next topic is uh, by Wukash about HSR. Um, there's a lot of patches floating around the mailing list about HSR, so we are looking forward to learning more. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Wukash Majewski. I'm uh, going to present some information regarding Linux kernel high availability CMS redundancy driver. Okay, so this presentation would be divided to three main parts. I will start with brief introduction into the standard. I will present what uh, are the internals, what is the operational idea behind it. Mm, then I will spend some time to present the current status of the Linux kernel driver development and say a few words about the possible improvements. And the, the last part would be to present some testing strategies which can be used with that uh, particular driver. So a few words about me. Uh, I'm embedded software engineer, employed as contractor at Denk Software Engineering. If you would have any questions regarding this presentation, please reach me with the email from this slide. Um, I'm very open source uh, oriented developer, uh, involved in some projects, uh, most notable are uh, networking in Zephyr. This is the T1S and DSA subsystems. I'm long time Ubuntu developer with some experience in the DFU and the USB uh, stack with Linux. Recently, I'm doing the networking, some DSA and the HSR itself. And with the GDPC, I help with the year 2038 bug fixing for duty to beat systems. So this is the short introduction. Let's start with the glossary. Uh, the HSR, high availability seamless redundancy, um, is built from nodes. We have uh, uh, DA and H, which is doubly attached node for HSR, and SAN, which is the singly attached node. The SANs uh, are representing networks which are not HSR. Uh, supporting, I will call them standard Ethernet. And if you want to, if we want to connect the uh, DA and H with SAN, then we need red boxes. Those are special devices which allow the communication uh, with two sides of, of that networks. And the red box is the abbreviation for redundancy box. Last but not least, there is, there is very similar in principle and properties uh, protocol to HSR. It is the PRP, Parallel Redundancy Protocol. So what is the rough idea behind the HSR driver itself? Uh, we have nodes uh, on the network, and the network topology is uh, ring. Each node uh, has two Ethernet ports, and now those two Ethernet ports, they form single SAH, a edge uh, uh, port. In principle, when we want to send data from the uh, node, for example here, uh, the frame is uh, passed to the, the data is passed to the SH, uh, SHL uh, driver, and then the frame is duplicated. So we have, we send exactly uh, two copies to the network, one on the one Ethernet port and the second one to the second Ethernet port. In that way, we have two copies flowing in the network. And then the destination node, uh, for example here, is receiving either two copies and then it decides if one shall be discarded or because of some failure, uh, for example, node is broken or the connection is broken, it only receives one copy. And this is enough, the networking still is working. Mm, as I depicted on the picture, uh, we have the red box node, which allow us to connect between the uh, standard Ethernet, like SANs, to the ring with the HSR nodes connected. Last but not least, uh, the node which is sending the frame, the duplicated frame, is responsible to remove them when it detects that the frame has 
made the whole circle. This prevents looping indefinitely uh, the frame in the, in the network. Okay, so how this is done in the level of frame? Um, we have the SAH, SAH, SAR uh, tag inserted. It has six bytes. Uh, first two bytes are the ether type. In our case, this is the 0x892f. Then we have the path ID, which specifies the direction in which the frame was sent. We also have the frame size because we can have different uh, HSR frames. Uh, for example, we have supervisory frames, we have supervisory frames from red boxes, we have uh, normal data uh, frames. So this is different for each case. Mm. And last but not least, we have the sequence number. And this is crucial because sequence number uh, in conjunction with source address allow us to assess if, the, if we already received the uh, copy of the frame and the copy which we receive afterwards can be dropped. Now I'm going to present some facts regarding the SAR, SAR protocol. SA, SA protocol. Uh, it is standardized by the International Electrotechnical Committee. Uh, the newest standard is from 2016. Uh, this protocol is very similar to PRP in principle and in properties because uh, the PRP basically has the more the star topology. This is the uh, redundancy network. So we have two networks in parallel. Whereas for the HSR, we have the ring topology. As I mentioned, uh, we have two Ethernet ports on top of which we build the HSR network device. Mm, frames are duplicated. That is the reason why we receive at least one copy. Mm, and also, as I showed previously, those frames are not compatible with uh, standard Ethernet frames. And this is the motivation for Redbox devices. Mm, as we have the duplication of frames, of links, there is no single point of failure. So even when the node is broken or the connection is broken, then we receive the data anyway. Mm. And this is the most important property of the protocol because we have first zero switch over time. So we don't have, we don't need extra time to reconfigure the network because of the failure, which is the case in, for example, RSTP. And also we don't lose any packets. So the data is flowing anyway. And uh, this makes it suitable for mission critical, safety critical, hard real time uh, use cases. Uh, and it's used mostly with the uh, industry slash tra transportation or heavy industry or avionics. So this is the use case for this particular driver. Uh, it is possible to offload some of the operation to hardware. For example, the duplication of, of frames can be can be do in the in the hardware device itself. Uh, and this driver is of the shell driver because one example, the most notable, is the KSZ9477 from Microchip. It was Miquel previously, uh, which can be used for such uh, use case. The KSD is uh, the switch uh, circuit, well known for to be the, the switch circuit. And also it is possible, according to the standard, to monitor the health of the network itself. Because in two second interval, by default, because this can be adjusted, uh, the supervisor frame is sent, which will uh, allow us to know which node is still reachable, if there is fa connection uh, failure with the connection, etc. So, how, what are the features of currently implemented driver? Uh, this driver supports the HSR version zero and one, 
uh, as well as PRP. And this is done in pure software. So this can be done in pure software. This is one case. Mm. Also, the Redbox support has been added recently. Uh, one thing to note is to have the pretty recent IP of two uh, program. 6.10 already has the support to set up the red box with the IP command. Mm. The HSL driver can closely cooperate with DSA driver, which has the uh, hooks or callbacks for setting up the HSR uh, protocol support in the uh, switch port. Uh, also, the red box is filtering some traffic which is not supposed to be received by the other side of the uh, network. For example, the HSR traffic shall not be delivered to the normal uh, Ethernet uh, port when not needed. And in opposite direction, this uh, helps with improving the performance. And I, as, as I say, there is offloading support. Uh, the KSZ9477, it uh, has hardware support for uh, duplication of the frames and also to send frames, one frame to the to two uh, HSI hour ports. So this is done in uh, hardware. Moreover, it has some hardware support for uh, removing duplicated frames, but this is according to the manufacturer not 100 per, not working 100% uh, uh, in, in all the cases. There are some cases in which uh, the frame can be not dropped. So we need the software fallback anyway, but this uh, provides substantial improvement in performance anyway. Uh, there is uh, another chip used, XRS700X, which despite of having the features from the above one, uh, it also can, in hardware, insert and remove HSR uh, tags. And the flags which are presented here, uh, those flags are accessible, accessible from Ethernet tool, at the ETH tool, and can be assessed if are supported or manipulated. Um, also, it is possible to inspect the node table uh, status in, in the via the driver, so one can see what are the nodes on the network available. Uh, there is some ongoing development. Uh, there were two patches developed by Sebastian Andrzej Shever recently. Uh, one of them replaced the plain plus plus operator with the sequence number increasing. Uh, with the atomic operation and also optimization for spin lock usage was uh, done. Mm, I also saw some patches from TI. Uh, this is the AM64 uh, SOC. And it provides the hardware support with the IC SSG IP block. But for doing that, you need the firmware from TI anyway. But to note that the Hardware offloading is also possible on this architecture. Now I'd like to delve into the testing uh, because I think this is quite crucial in this, in, for this driver. Um, first approach is to use the hardware. Of course, this is very welcome for uh, the customers because you can test it with the real hardware, how it works. Uh, uh, or how it will work in the, uh, during the deployments, etc. In my case, I was using the, HS, uh, the, the KSZ9477 development boards. Uh, I was able to set up the connection with and without hardware support, uh, offloading support for the uh, HSL driver. So one, it was possible to use only software emulated HSL and then to use the hardware emulator hardware offloaded use case. Also, there was the uh, port, tilt port, uh, to model the red box case, to connect, uh, to communicate with the uh, standard network, uh, standard Ethernet network. For the configuration, 
important parts are here that we need to slave uh, at any ports to, con to form one HSR higher level network device. Also, you specify the portion of the MAC address for the supervisor frame and the version of the protocol. And for the red box, there is the field parameter, parameter, the interlink, which is the port to which the uh, standard network uh, devices can be connected. So this is the configuration. And uh, um, when I had that all connected, I did some measurements, maybe to uh, <coughs> be sure how, how good it works. So I was using the NAT TCP uh, program. In my use case, uh, it was uh, 100 megabits per second, uh, the maximum speed uh, for the transmission. So with hardware offloading enabled, I was pretty close to that value. But when we only use the when I only use the software, then the performance dropped, uh, I think, considerably, and. Uh, it was uh, possible to see the difference in, in the operation. Now the second case, I think even more interesting, uh, this is the case we've used in the QMU, and this particular diagram is from the uh, already available in the Linux kernel 3 HSR underscore redbox file. Mm, what we can see is that we can model the small HSR ring. Uh, this SHA ring is connected to the switch, to the process, uh, sorry, to bridge, and uh, we have some uh, standard network devices connected to the bridge. So the, um, the topology is pretty, maybe not very complex, but it uh, reflects the normal use case, for example, uh, for the HSR driver. What is important here is that one can use this uh, uh, approach when there is no hardware, because very often the hardware is available during the development and then it is sent to the customer, sent back to the customer. And in this case, with using the network namespaces and traffic control program, one can simulate very sophisticated networks and use cases. For example, drop patches, for example, introduce some G jitter. Uh, reduce the uh, speed of the link, uh, even insert some wrong values to the packet itself. So this can be all modeled with the QMU. And uh, as it is in one box in the host uh, PC, you can easily connect Wireshark, T-Shark, check what is the status of the network. Uh, to even make it even uh, better to, to access to test uh, the HSL driver. I will now present how one can set up this uh, uh, test environment. I have uploaded with this link uh, the uh, my configuration file to my GitHub, so they are uh, fully available. Uh, those are two configuration files. One is to build the build root itself and it has some extra tools like bash, etc. enabled. The second step after we build the build root, uh, we compile the kernel. And uh, the configuration files is also uploaded. Uh, it has support for virtual Ethernet, HSI, uh, network namespaces. Uh, this configuration is in sync with the NetNext from last Friday, I think. So we build the kernel and copy it to the build directory structure. Last step is to, of course, uh, start the QMU, but uh, uh, we need to mount with the SSHFS uh, the directory with the test itself. So this is under tools, testing, selflessness, and HSR. And then we can freely run the SSH red box and SSH uh, pink. So it is very easy to assess if the uh, tool is working correctly or uh, if the driver is working correctly with that uh, approach. Okay, so what are the future 
enhancements. Uh, first of all, the node table is available uh, to the debug FS, and we discussed it on the mailing list that this is not the best approach. Uh, so, other uh, idea, other way needs to be uh, devised. Uh, also, the, that is the reason why the proxy node tables from uh, red boxes are not accessed yet. Uh, for my internal usage, I'm, I have some patches to use the debug FS as well, but I think that uh, maybe the IPO2 might be uh, extended or maybe SysFS can be used for such, uh, to deliver such information. Also, my impression is that the HSR uh, forward do function is going pretty convoluted uh, recently. Uh, according to the standard, the patch ID shall be set when we use the red box device. This is not yet done, uh, so this is the open, open topic. Um, also, there is the, um, maybe it would be good to separate the PRP and HSR specific code, because for now we have the HSR underscore uh, file names, which start with the prefix of HSR underscore. And this is a bit misleading for somebody who doesn't have the uh, experience with that driver itself. Somebody reached me via private email with the question if I'm planning to add the uh, red box support for PRP. And unfortunately not because this was the PRP itself was out of the uh, spec for my project. And also, I think that uh, at some point we would need to provide uh, uh, support for VLAN and P2P in the HSR ring. Uh, I, my personal impression is that the P2P demand will be sooner than the VLAN. Uh, also, it would be good to model the quad box operation with the test scripts because I did not do that, uh, but this is interesting to check if the two combined red boxes can form the quad box. And also the driver itself is orphan. Uh, it is developed ad hoc, in ad hoc manner, when developers have some work related to this particular driver. So this also could be improved. Okay, to sum up. Uh, as I said, the SHR driver is actively developed. Uh, patches are flowing, maybe not very high volume, but from time to time there are fixes, there are some enhancements. Uh, it is also possible to uh, use the hardware offloading. Maybe good uh, starting point and good reference is the KSZ9477 because it shows the way to add the support for chip which might be used in that case. Uh, my impression is that there is uh, some rising interest in the industry to have the open source PRP and HSR uh, driver available. And also the QMO based test setup is really sophisticated, might be really sophisticated and is a very good tool for uh, validation and to prevent regressions. So those were my uh, points of the, of the presentation. Now it's time for the questions. Thank you. Uh, how the, the duplication is actually working? Is it based on some kind of uh, frame ID or just arrival time? Uh, the duplication is that when you use the offloading, uh, then you have the, uh, the hardware itself is just copy the binary data. So in the case of the hardware, the KSZ, for example, it just copy binary data and even the path ID is not correct according to the standard because you have the path ID of zero and then it's sent it. So this is like one way. The second way is that in the driver itself, it just copy binary data. Uh, when you have the interface before you uh, send it to the... I mean, the duplication. Ah, duplication. the duplication. Yeah. Okay, sorry. So the, the duplication is that uh, you use the destination address 
uh, no, the source address with the sequence number. So you have the in, in buffer the number of received uh, frames, and when you see that, okay, I have already received that from that uh, source address with that sequence number frame, then when you receive the another copy, then you knew, okay, this is already served, and you toss it away. Are there some kind of uh, maximal timings between arrival time to uh, duplicate it, they duplicate it correctly? I think there is specified by the standard, but I would need to delve into the... For sure there is like the information stored in the uh, node, which receives the data, you have the list uh, and some cache with the frames available. So you just have the information what, what was received and then uh, by using the destination, the source address and sequence number, you just remove it. Mm. And one more question, how PTP is expected to work there? I saw some presentation from Cisco that uh, you need to hack the way that you receive the frames because you have the duplication, so you don't know which one is the correct one. And uh, you would need to delve into the uh, received frame and then make the adjustments. This is done already with the Cisco, but uh, they advertise this, but I was not thinking yet how this can be moved to our hmm. uh, driver. Because so. uh, if I imagine it correctly, the <coughs> path of the frame inside of the ring has uh, some unexpected uh, latencies inside of the switches and as far as I know, cassette switches do support transparent clock, but only if DSI is disabled. If CPU taking is disabled, then the transparent clock will work, and if not, then... <laughs> I don't know. I mean, my impression is that for now, the demand was to have the HSR from the Linux kernel with hardware offloading and pretty good performance. And that was the, the case here. But... Uh, if the PTP will show up, I think yes, because for the transportation or uh, any real uh, time support, it will be required anyway. But I don't know how, how it can be yet uh, done. We just move step by step with some basic, uh, how to say, steps to follow, right? Hi. Um, there is a specification for PTP and HSR. And I've been working on this for like two years ago, twice, and it canceled, got cancelled twice. Um, you need to uh, patch Linux PTP like big time to uh, support transparent clock and dual clock and whatnot. Uh -huh. And I have no idea how to get it done in the kernel. You need um, the Linux way you have the sequence number is that the highest one wins. That's why you have to send in one by one and shoot the last packet uh, left and they got not, not to get reordered. Um, either way, you need to send packets from uh, user land which get uh, duplicated on both links and you need to have one-to-one -one connection on both sides of their Ethernet link to get one-to-one -one connection for the clock. Okay. I'm not as far as doing code. I have the specification, I think, um, this year. And then it got cancelled again because um, the more nodes you get, the slower it gets and then people say, no, it's not worth it. Okay, so this is the open question if there is the... Right, so this is what you need to keep in mind if you ever try to implement it. Okay, so the performance drop is... Uh, well, the performance drop is because you need to... Um, say you have 20 nodes, right? Then you have to copy the packet and it gets slower and slower with each node. So each one I know that are using this in production have um, FPGA with cut through. So what you get in Linux is um, all set. Okay. And you don't worry about anything else. Um, TI, with uh, what you presented, I'm not aware of anything recent. I know they have heavily patched kernel and user end, including Linux PTP, with their hardware. And for something Linux kernel is what they offer. I haven't seen anything recent. I think that were patches uh, from a few days ago, like at least from the September. Ah, okay. That's news to me, because back then when I tried to do it, I was like, hey, what's doing TI? Maybe we can copy it. And this was, no, no, it's heavily dependent on what they did on the firmware side. Uh -huh. Okay. So, 
at yeah. best what we yes. have in Linux now, we have the, some off-the-shelf uh, device with the uh, limited of, of loading. And uh, at least in my case, we are happy that the performance was uh, high enough to have the 100 megabits transport uh, speed achieved. So this is the, the current status of the driver. What would be the next? Then I cannot uh, say what would be the next demands. Okay. Um, maybe the first question, can you do it selectively? Like, like can you say, for example, uh, I don't know, this uh, destination address or something like we do HSR and for another we do it, we don't do it. So, I mean, for example, to have like you could say, okay, the, the, the application traffic uses HSR and for the time synchronization, we don't use it because we have another setup, something like this. I think this would not be welcome because when you set the, uh, we divide the network to have the HSR, very often this is to communicate with some very important parts of the, of the system and then the parts which are not so critical then just use the other uh, networks, that, how to say. And uh, when we start to mix it, then I believe this will, will not work well at some point. I just uh, say about the PTP because I was curious about the Cisco is advertising it that maybe somebody from the management of some companies will read it and then demand, hey, they did it, so do it in the open source. Mm -hmm. My impression is that this is for reliable systems. So when we start mixing frames which have the SSH tag and they don't have the SSH tag, then we would see some issues. Yeah. And uh, one impression from using the KSZ 9477 was that when uh, the chip was not correctly configured, when there was no separation, when the, all the frames were mixed, then it was not working correctly. There were some subtle bugs. So also the way the hardware is configured is important in, in this case. This is why I mentioned the DSA uh, configuration hooks and etc. Okay, I see. Um, another question. So I've seen in the in the in the tag, there is a four-bit uh, path ID. So yes. are there more complex topologies than just a pure mm. ring? Where I mean, you no, would only need one bit for the HSR. This is the uh, just one bit is used, and uh, okay. for the PRP, more bits are are used. Ah, okay, I see. So they use basically the this same tag structure. In principle, PRP is very similar. To okay, the I HSR. see. They're just uh, different clauses in the, in the okay, standard. Okay. And the last question, um, how would you operate it properly, such a network? So what, what I mean, for example, when I, when I ping, or just send a ping to, between two, two um, devices, and one link is, one part of the ring is, for example, broken, mm -hmm. you would not see it. Uh, you, you would not notice that, because you just use the H HSR higher level, uh, how to say, network devices. So we just configure the routing to use the, that one, and you don't see the uh, network ports which are uh, in the, from which you build the SHR device. So you just see the HSR zero, for example, and then you just send the data and you will not notice that something went broken. But Where you can notice that something went broken is the node table, which, uh, allows you to, oh, where is the, you have the node table which will have the information about the network status uh, itself. Okay. And so we have the node table which will say that, okay, node table from this node, we say that, okay, there is a path to this uh, port, the path to this port, and uh, you will see the, the status and healthness of the, of the system itself. So, okay, and I, I can get that via ETH tool or whatever. Excuse me? So, f from user space, how can I? Uh, the node it? table. You can use the node okay. table to see what is the status and hardness of the, of okay. the driver itself. When you send pings, you would not uh, see that uh, the duplication, of course, if you disable the debug spot, <laughs> uh, you normally will not notice that. Okay, so I, I just from user space access the node table and then I will see, okay, yeah, this, this part of the ring broken, is probably yes, broken. But it was yeah. because with the two seconds interval, you have the uh, 
uh, update of the, the frames, the supervisor frames are sent with two second interval. So when you unplug the cable or do something like that, you will notice that something will be. But only after two seconds. Old. Yeah. Okay. But you shouldn't notice that uh, when you the network is properly configured and you have two, uh, how to say, two paths to travel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Not table is actually a table, but uh, what is the actual user space tool? Uh, no, this is exported with via the debugger first. So it's like oh. a file that you can cat and, and see. But, but I hope there is a plan to use uh, IP route or something like Netlink interface. Though. That was the discussion, because my first approach was to just use the same API, yeah. to use the same file, for example. So this is exported as file. So we cut it and you see what is the status. And for red boxes, it was also required to see the net the IP address, uh, the MAC addresses uh, for the nodes which are connected to the standard Ethernet. And I was planning to use the same uh, way to do that. But then on the list, it was replied that the, the debug FS is for debugging. This is not used for yeah. like production. And in, when this is done in that way that you use debug FS, then you force somebody or there is a temptation from the uh, how to say industry to use it as a fixed API. API. Good. <laughs> and uh, maybe the IPO tool can be extended, or I think Andrew Loon also proposed maybe some other program, like we have the program for managing the database for the uh, switches, uh, can be done in that way. Mm. So this is the open question. Maybe CSFS, but I don't know uh, it can be used for, for this. <coughs> I am a um, diagnostic fan, so I like uh, to, to make a diagnostic which uh, works in embedded devices and automatically without inter interaction of the uh, human. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I just uh, trying to imagine how to uh, diagnose this kind of issues as fast as possible, that there is a regression in the uh, ring. Uh -huh. And uh, in this case, I can imagine that uh, the, the kernel uh, need always uh, watching what is the state of the neighbor table, or whatever table name is it, and uh, if there is a change, then push some kind of broadcast uh, notification over netlink to the user space that oh, there are I mean, changes. As, as I say, on the very beginning, uh, the demand, the, the requirement was to have the full speed uh, HSR with the ring support, uh, red boxes with the 100 mega. Uh, bits per second, and that was the basic requirement. And for for the daily use or for testing, it was enough to add the code which was out of the tree. But for have it done properly, then maybe a bit more yeah. uh, discussion is, is required because yeah, at some point people will start using that, and uh, maybe they they already did it. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is a little speaker gift. Thank you.